detailed banking network. This gave the order the means to carry out its plans and to multiply its influence. That's Nesta Webster World Revolution, page 20, and Count Egan Caesar Corti, The Rise of the House of Rothschild, page 10. As a result of the alliance with the Rothschilds, the Illuminati grew, it took root, it flourished, it gathered itself more men of royal and noble titles, even the Jesuits joined. The Rothschilds had played a major role in the Bavarian Illuminati, hosting the Masonic Congress of Wilhelmsbad. When Amschel Rothschild died, headship fell onto Nathan Rothschild of England. The bloodline continued to infiltrate lodges in England. He was initiated into London's Lodge of Emulation, Fritz Springmeyer Bloodlines of the Illuminati. Karl Rothschild became leader in 1818. An Alta Vendetta document that Karl prepared was sent to the headquarters of Masonry. A copy of the document was lost and the Masons were upset and offered a reward for the return of the document. It was called Practical Code of Rules Guide for the Heads of the Highest Grades of Freemasonry. James Rothschild spread his family to France. James was a 33rd degree Scottish Rite. Fritz Springmeyer Bloodlines of the Illuminati. Thirteen years after the Illuminati supposedly stopped, Reverend G. W. Snyder wrote George Washington a letter, August 22, 1798. He says, quote, A society of Freemasons that distinguished itself by the name of Illuminati, whose plan is to overthrow all government and religion. It might be within your power to prevent the horrid plan from corrupting these English lodges over which you preside, unquote. Here's the original manuscript sources of George Washington's writings from the U.S. government printing office. In response to Snyder's letter, Washington writes, quote, I have heard much of the nefarious and dangerous plan and doctrines of the Illuminati. It is not my intention to doubt that the doctrine of the Illuminati and the principles of Jacobinism had not spread in the United States. On the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of this fact than I am. So what he's saying is you don't have to tell me about the Illuminati and what they're doing in New York, I already know. When he says he's satisfied, that does not mean he's happy about it. In that old English context, it means he's convinced of it. So no one is more convinced than I am. Then he says, and I'm going to paraphrase for you because it's in old English. He says, the idea that I meant to convey was that I did not believe that the lodges of the Freemasons in this country had, as societies, endeavored to propagate the diabolical tenets of the first, the Illuminati, or the pernicious principles of the latter, the Jacobins, but that there are individuals in the Masonic order who may have done this. So he's saying that no whole lodge in America is involved in this as a whole society, but individuals in the lodges may be or that the founder or instruments employed to found the democratic societies in the United States, later known as the Democratic Party, may have had these objects in mind and actually had the separation of the people from their government in view is too evident to be questioned. So what he's saying is he knows of the Illuminati's plans, they are real, no whole lodge is involved in it in America yet, but individuals in the lodges probably are and the Democratic Party was founded by a secret society of Masons that want to divide the people from their government, and it's too evident to be questioned. Joseph Willard, president of Harvard in 1812, said, quote, There is sufficient evidence that a number of societies of the Illuminati have been established in this land. They are doubtless trying to secretly undermine all our ancient institutions, civil and sacred. The enemies of all order are seeking our ruin. Should they prevail, our independence would fall, of course. A republican government would be annihilated. The U.S. State Department began a close relationship with the Grand Orient of France in the late 1930s. Marshal Henry Philip Attain was against Freemasonry. He closed down the Grand Orient in 1940. He then forced legislation demanding the disbanding of all secret societies. Masons were forced to either resign from their posts or from their lodges. Attain was a traitor and he was working with the German army providing them with large food supplies and manufactured goods. 
Patain had a total of 5,000 Masons arrested. He took the opportunity to confiscate the archives of the Freemasons, which were handed to the German government. The Freemasons took their revenge on Patain in 1945 when he was sentenced to life in prison for treason. So with the help of Patain, the Germans had the powerful French Grand Orient archives, but not for long. After a grueling and bloody battle, the Soviets had their way with Germany, and in 1945 at Castle of Alten in Niederschlossen, the Red Army came across 25 large German railway cars containing the powerful French Grand Orient archives. The documents gave a comprehensive picture of the secret power wielded by international Freemasonry. The information in the documents contained important details about the Masonic conspiracy for a New World Order One World Government with the West. With the aid of the secret Masonic archives, Stalin was able to blackmail several Western Masonic politicians who feared exposure. Even the pro-Masonic magazine, Freemasonry Today, Autumn 2001 edition, talks about the same thing. Quote, On June 14, 1940, the German army entered Paris and on the same day took control of the buildings of the Grand Orient de France. At Rue Cadet, situated in the center of the city, German military intelligence officers also paid a visit to the homes of the Masons. On July 1, 1940, the German foreign minister, Alfred Rosenberg, informed Martin Bormann that, quote, the great treasures had been discovered in occupied Masonic premises. Teams were established to seize documents relating to the workings of the Grand Orient, the largest organized body of French Freemasonry. They seized valuable historical documents specifically targeting files covering the Grand Orient's external relations from the middle of the 19th century. Stalin's victorious Red Army later transferred them to Moscow's special central state archives, where their very existence remained a state secret. It was not until after the fall of the communist regime in 1990 that an American researcher, Kennedy Grimstead, revealed their existence. After prolonged negotiations, the archives were successfully returned to France. According to the Grand Orient's librarian, Pierre Moliere, this was like Christmas many times over. Illuminized Masonic symbolism is all over America. On the back of the dollar bill on the left hand side above the pyramid it says Anuit Coeptus, which means our enterprise is now a success, or a crowned success. So what enterprise does it mean? Well, Novus Ordo Seclorum near the bottom. Novus meaning new, Ordo is order, Seclorum is where we get our word secular meaning the world. So it means new order of the world, simply new world order. So what it's saying is the New World Order is now a crowned success. This was put on the dollar bill in 1934. 1934 is when the Federal Reserve took total control of the United States monetary system. The Fed is essentially controlled by two Illuminati bloodlines, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, a 32nd degree Scottish Rite Mason, placed the seal on the dollar bill. Roosevelt was also in the Order of the Nobles of the Mystic Shrine known for its satanic rituals. The pyramid has 13 steps. In fact, the number 13 is on the bill everywhere. 13 leaves on the olive branch. 13 berries. 13 stripes on the shield. 13 arrows. 13 stars. 13 letters on E Pluribus Unum. And 13 letters in Anuit Coeptus. Now some people believe 13 is on the bill due to the 13 colonies. But dig a little bit deeper and you'll find the real answer. The 13 colony explanation is subliminal indirect reverse psychological propaganda. That's how these people do things. We must go back to the first occurrence of the number 13 in order to discover its key significance. It occurs first in Genesis 14 verse 4. It says 12 years they served Ketelaner and in the 13th year they rebelled. These people are rebelling against the divine natural order and Adam Weissept was a rebel as well. The other half of the meaning comes from Fritz Springmeier. 13 also represents the 13 top Illuminati families that he traced back to the late 18th century and the early 19th century. He is credible and that's why he was framed by the government and thrown in a cage. 1776 is in Roman numerals near the bottom. Some think it's because of the founding of the country. Another case of subliminal indirect reverse psychological propaganda. 1776 is when the Illuminati was formed the New World Order. Another striking fact is that the eagle has 32 feathers on the right wing, the number of ordinary degrees of the Scottish right. There's 33 feathers on the left wing, representing the 33rd degree. The tail has 9 feathers, which represents the 9th degree of the York right. The eagle itself is a prominent icon in masonry, extensively used in the Scottish right.
Here is your average Freemasonic Enter Apprentice initiation ritual, caught on a hidden camera. But then later, something more nefarious. They're standing and sitting around a pentagram. These are your Freemasons. They have a goat on the pentagram, and they're doing a satanic sacrifice, draining the blood of the goat into a bucket. You can see them cutting the neck. Now if you have family members that are Freemasons, do not be alarmed of this video. This probably doesn't happen at the Blue Lodge, the first, second or third degree. This is most likely a 